Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 15, Rarity Investigates. Okay, I enjoyed almost all of this episode. Though when I first watched it, I thought the beginning of it was kind of slow. It's like, I know where you're going with this. Can you get there already? <laughs> I mean, I didn't even really look at the title. I just like, by the start of the episode, because she was referring to a mystery novel, I was like, yeah, this is going to be an episode about a mystery. Can we get there already? Because you already pointed that out. Most of this setup, you could like squeeze down better and optimize more, because it seemed like you're taking too long to get to the actual mystery. <laughs> Yeah, but we still had a very similar setup in Mystery on the Mmm Express because most of the setup was getting the cake onto the train and then meeting the rivals, and then stuff happened, and then we investigated. But of course, the moment I saw Mr. Windrider, I was like, yeah, you're the bad guy. <laughs> Yeah, which was rather unfortunate because it would have been cool if, you know, a hero could stay a hero. But that's also a nice lesson for a children's show that heroes aren't always heroes. Though I gotta say, at one point during it, I was like, hmm, maybe it's, maybe I'm wrong and it's Spitfire trying to set up something for Rainbow Dash. And then, oh, no, Spitfire wouldn't leave the hair. <laughs> yeah, because when it... Spitfire's mom first showed up, I thought that this might be more about Spitfire. You know, for some reason she didn't want her mom to see her perform. So she fabricated an excuse to get away. Or Spitfire had some other reason that she didn't want to be there and didn't realize her mom would be coming, so thought her mom would make a good excuse. Mm. I also thought that maybe um, when I thought it was Spitfire for a split second as it were, I thought Spitfire was maybe giving a chance for Rainbow Dash because Spitfire has seen Rainbow Dash perform and knows that it might be a good thing. And mentioning the whole thing about beating his record, maybe something about that would happen. Mm -hmm. And then the cut hairs came out. I was like, no, Spitfire wouldn't be trying to frame Rainbow Dash for this. He would just leave it up as a mystery of who actually did it and then show up later going, I knew you were something sting Rainbow Dash. You know, you know it was good for you or whatever. Yeah giving Rainbow Dash an opportunity, you know, since we don't need to hurt Soren again, we already had that happen. Oh, yeah, I did some investigation to uh, the voice actor for Soren. It's the same guy who played, uh, what's his name? The main guy from Captain and Game Master. That's Kevin? Yep, same voice actor. Wow, yay for him for still working, because Captain and Game Master was coming up on 30 years ago. Well, at least 25. Yeah, I was, like, really surprised. I knew that voice sounded familiar before. Looked it up. Oh my god! <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, that's a little bit of interesting trivia there. Yes, and thank you for that little bit of investigation in this investigation episode. Mm-hmm. What actually got me started on it was, like, Spitfire's voice sounds different again. Look it up. Wow, it's actually always been the same voice actress. Only time she was played different was in the first episode she was in, which was... The episode where Rainbow Dash saves the Wonderbolt team in the episode where Rarity becomes Icarus, as it were. Mm -hmm. And that was actually played by the voice actress who plays Celestia. Mm. But after that point, it's been the same voice actress, even when she was a little bit more gruff in Wonderbolt Academy. Oh, back to the episode we're actually on. I, I could definitely see Rarity reading that type of novel. The only real issue I had with that film noir feeling was that I felt like I was back in the comic books because that film noir feeling was what Rarity took during the bookworm story arc. Hmm. And anything similar to the comics makes me edgy. <laughs> well, at least the series seems to be taking similar themes and making it feel less, oh, we're doing this for the fans. <laughs> Even though this was probably a little bit for the fans. <laughs> Yes, well, how many young children would appreciate half of their cartoon being broadcast in black and white? <laughs> Mom, the tea! I was like, Mom, your phone's broken! <laughs> yeah, and I was about to say TV, but I was like, wait a minute, she said little kids. So little kids are probably watching on their parents' phones or through a streaming box of some sort, which would technically be on the TV, but they wouldn't say TV, because they're like, the streaming box is on the fritz, or Mom, your phone's broken! <laughs> It keeps going black and white. Can you fix it? Or maybe I needed to find another copy of this from... Maybe we need to buy it from, like, Netflix or something. 
Yeah, because this copy you bought from Amazon isn't working. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like there's this joke about, oh, look, I did a 3D print of the save icon. <laughs> Someone's holding up an actual floppy disk. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly after that one point where I felt it was too slow, things took off for me, and I was starting to giggle a lot. Rainbow Dash had some great expressions, especially when she was like, even I'm starting to believe I did it. <laughs> Yeah, because, like, the evidence is overwhelming, and I was asleep. Do you know what I do when I'm asleep? Because I don't. <laughs> I'm like, well, for starters, you sleep, and then you sleep, and maybe you dream, but mostly you sleep. Mm hmm And your brain does a bunch of metabolic processes that, I think that's the correct term, but otherwise your body works on repairing itself and getting ready for the next day. Especially when you can sleep well. Mmm, bed. Uh... Podcast. Podcast, Lux. I also liked the lighting for that questioning scene. It was like really, it had a really nice contrast to it where they were questioning the guards. It was nice to see a return of Rarity exercising her charm. I don't really feel like we've seen that since the episode where Fluttershy learned how to stand up for herself. Mm, yes, I was going to say that. So that was also a callback to that particular episode. There's just a lot of nice things in here. We Oh, we get to see a Pegasus parent. I just realized, because we really see parents of Pegasi in the series. <laughs> no, we really don't. So that was a nice touch. But going back to the dinner at the palace, Rainbow Dash, you're there with Rarity and the Wonderbolts. Rarity. You have access to the entire line of Canterlot Boutique. And what do you choose to wear? Nothing. <laughs> At least wear your Wonderbolt trainee uniform. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'm also like, I can kind of understand her still fanboying and stuff like that. But yeah, I thought she was like a little bit more professional by now. <laughs> well, she's good with the regular Wonderbolts, but not so much with this guy who's, you know, this record holder and like one of the first Wonderbolts. So probably the difference between meeting Johnny Young Bosch and Jason David Frank. <laughs> uh, Power Ranger reference drop check. Mm -hmm. And um, speaking of the record, I think Grandma Dash may have broke his record. <laughs> Going after Spitfire. I thought I should say, I thought they might bring that up because of how far they said it would be to find her. So. Mm hmm. And how quickly they got there and back. Because Rainbow Dash definitely has speed, but it sounds like uh, Windrider's record was speed over distance, which is why Rainbow Dash doesn't already hold the record with her sonic rain boom, because that basically breaks the freaking sound barrier. But that's over short distance. And this was over long distance. So everyone who's going, wait, but Rainbow Dash did a sonic rain boom. And if Wind Rider's even faster than that, wow, he must be fast. Fast over distance, not fast overall. Rainbow Dash is a sprinter, not a marathon runner. Mm-hmm. Except apparently she sprinted a marathon in this episode to get Spitfire back. Mm-hmm. So do you have more points to bring up? Yes, I liked how Rainbow Dash was totally not getting Rarity's investigative techniques. <laughs> It's the only time I really thought she went off was the damask pattern on the curtains and the velvet tiebacks. Though that reminds me, since I watched the episode a second time, all the stuff is actually there. They made sure to actually put it in. So it's not just like what they've done with some investigative cartoons or older shows where they point out things that the audience never saw. All the stuff's there in the episode. Mm -hmm. The only thing we couldn't see in the episode is, you know, smell. But we did see her sniff the envelope, so we knew she smelled something. Yes, and since we've made a point that there was a cologne that we already recognized that we know is Flynn Rider's signature fragrance, I feel kind of bad for Rarity if she could smell it from that far away, and if Flynn Rider was wearing enough of it for it to contaminate the envelope, ugh, it must be enough perfume to choke a Pegasi. Except <laughs> he's the one wearing it. Mm -hmm. Also, I now have a conflict of what image I'm going to draw for this episode. Either it's going to be Rarity in her investigative outfit, or it's going to be her as Angela Lansbury in Murder, She Wrote. I vote for the second one. <laughs> uh, oh, that's another person if she's um, still doing acting work. 
Angela Lansbury would be great to be a guest voice. Mm -hmm. Especially if it is as a pony who's a mystery writer. That would be fun. Because we have already gotten to meet one author. Mm -hmm. And since we just mentioned one here, we could always have her voice, that character, showing up. And Rarity and her go on an adventure together. <laughs> or not. You know, in the MLP universe, maybe sometimes an author can be just an author. <laughs> and what's the fun in that? <laughs> A great deal, trust me. <laughs> and her going into all the detail about the cake and the fashion, I'm like, God, Rainbow Dash is dying, but this is important. And oh, gee, the Pegasus looked a little similar to Rainbow Dash. Well, isn't that interesting? Because it's interesting how similar Flynn Rider, I want to say Flynn Rider because that is the play on names for Wind Rider, <clears throat> very similar body color to Rainbow Dash. And of course, you know, that Rainbow Dash's mane is so messy that you could cut a lock of hair like that out of it and it wouldn't be particularly noticeable or if you tried to do that on some pony else it would be very obvious or it could just be rainbow dash's own trimmings mm -hmm. especially if she knew she was going to be in a show she may do a little bit of cleanup just a little bit because if it was rarity oy. are you done rarity it's almost time for the show just a little bit longer yeah it's been eight hours <laughs> but at the point that that cutting would have been needed rainbow dash was still definitely in the reserves because the hair clippings had to be in the envelope. So either the clippings were in the envelope when the envelope was delivered or Windrider had to double back and plant them in the envelope afterwards. Hmm. Interesting logistic problem. Quite. And it was nice to have an episode in Canterlot that part of it took place in the palace, but Celestia didn't really need to play a role in it, so she didn't. We just got to see her in the background. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the palace, those poor guards. I've counted the ceiling bolts too many times. <laughs> I know, I'm like, wow, your job is that boring. Has it always been that boring, or is it just that boring since uh, Shining Armor isn't there to whip you guys into shape anymore? <laughs> uh, or it's the fact that, you know, he's in Equestria, or only until recently, apparently, a lot of stuff hasn't, it usually doesn't happen. Yeah, but I would think ever since the Changeling showed up, the guards would be a little more, I don't know, on guard. Mm-hmm. Are you a Changeling? Dude, asking me that question will not help you figure that out. And by the way, no. <laughs> if it won't help me, then why are you answering it? So that you'll stop asking. Would you please do that? Because you've asked me about like 15 times now. Oh, well, you're a changeling. You could change. I am not a changeling. And I have looked exactly the same every time you've asked me. Except for the time three days ago where I got a main cut. All joking aside. Also the nice ending that actions have consequences. Mm. So that was kind of important. And I just remembered a nice touch they did on the episode, the um, noir music they played over the credits instead of the usual theme. Yeah, but I think if you listen really carefully, it was actually the theme redone as a noir arrangement. Hmm, but overall it was still a nice touch to continue the theme throughout the episode, including the credits. Mm-hmm. I love those times when Rarity was accidentally monologuing out loud. Uh, is, oh, oh, did I say that one out loud? Nice use of that particular joke. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that suddenly reminded me of something else. I don't know why, because it has nothing to do with that. Did Sword look extra tired to you? Yes. I think it's because they drew him with an extra line underneath his eye. Mm -hmm. And that made him look tired. Yes, he looked tired to me. I mean, like, to the point of, oh, are we going to be short a pony anyways because Spitfire's gone and Soren's too exhausted to fly? Well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 15, Rarity Investigates. Thanks for listening, and if you enjoyed my work, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you really liked our podcast, please subscribe, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Please be nice. And if you really like my work, I just started a Patreon, so you can support me through there and get high-quality copies of any work I do for it.